Hello, hello. Welcome back. We are in Chapter 8, Lesson 1, talking about the building blocks of geometry. So at first, we're just going to go over um, some different geometric vocabulary terms. The first one we're going to talk about is a point. A point is an exact location. All right. It usually uh, it is usually represented as a dot, but it has no size at all. So this is a point right here, and it's called point A. Now, how we would state point A is just by saying, writing out the word point A. We use a capital letter to name a point, okay? Um, the next term that we're going to discuss is a line. A line is a straight path that extends without end in opposite direction. So a line is a straight path that extends without end in opposite directions. So if you look here, this is a line. It's a straight line. It goes forever and ever this way, and it goes forever and ever that way. Okay, now there's different things, ways we can call uh, this a line. We can express this line as x, y, and you see how it just has this little mini line on top of it? So that is the symbol for a line because there's a point x and y on the line. Or you could call it y, x. It doesn't matter the order, whether it's x, y, or y, x. Uh, but you need to have that little symbol of a line on top. Or you could call it just, there's a label right here, and that's just L, okay? So there's actually three different ways to write this particular line here, X, Y, Y, X, or L. So you use two points on the line or a lowercase um, to name the line. So this, just to name the whole line, is a lowercase L. But otherwise, the points uh, are capitalized, Okay. Um, one line that you, we have used quite a bit so far is a number line. A number line is an example of a line. So that is a point and that's a line. Uh, let's go over the next term. The next term we're going to talk about is a plane. A plane is a flat surface that has no thickness and extends forever in all directions. Excuse me. So a plane is a flat surface that has no thickness and extends forever in all directions. So this right here is a pictorial of a plane. Now, sometimes in planes, you will have points within planes. And so to put a label on this plane, we would call it plane Q R S. So whenever you're labeling a plane, you use three points. That's very, very important is that you use three points in any order, not on the same line to name a plane. Okay, so notice how these, you can't draw a straight line from any, through a, a, all three of these points. You could draw a line through two of them and that's fine, but uh, you have to have three points where you can't draw a line through all three of them, okay, to label a plane. So this is plane QRS. Another plane that we've dealt with so far is a coordinate plane. A coordinate plane is an example of a plane. And remember, a coordinate plane is just, it has an x-axis and it has a y-axis. And uh, that's another example of a plane, all right? Let's go ahead and look at a few examples. So the first is example one. Oh, let me fix this for you. Okay. Example one is identifying points, lines, and planes. So looking at this diagram here, we need to um, label three points. So we could uh, label three points as uh, one would be point E would be one. Make sure we use that capital E for the point. Another one would be point D. 
And the third would be point F. Okay? Now we need to uh, label two lines in this diagram. Okay, I see that this line, go it extends forever going through ED, and I'm just going to do it alphabetical. So one example of a line would be DE, and make sure we put that little line symbol on top. That would be one. Another line would be this one right here, and I'm going to do this one in alphabetical order as well. You don't have to do an alph alphabetical order, but what I found is that uh, for the most part, when you're checking your work and different types of uh, problems, most people usually put them in um, alphabetical order. How if, if, however, if they're not in alphabetical order, you just need to recognize that it's the same. So, for instance, if I'm going to label this line and call it in alphabetical order DF, you need to be able to realize that FD is the same thing as DF. Just two different ways to write the same thing. Okay? So, those are our two rep uh, representations of a line. Now, we need to describe the plane. So this is the plane, and you have to be able, you, so you write the word plane, and then you just put three points that aren't in a straight line in any order, and I'm just going to go ahead and do it in alphabetical order. So D, E, F, and use capital letters. So that's how that works. Now it is your turn to check it out. So go ahead and check it out in example one. You're going to identify four planes, two lines, and uh, did I say four planes? I meant four points. I'm sorry. Two lines and three planes. Oh, there's our friend, the lovely pause dragon, reminding you to pause your uh, device. Uh, work out these three problems. And when you get done, press play and we'll see how you did. Okay, we are back. Um, let's go ahead and identify four points. Uh, the first one, or it, there are no particular order. I'm going to go with point G. Point G would be one. Uh, we could go with point F is another one. Another one uh, is point H. And the last point I see is point I. And I'm going to go ahead and make I like that, and then it's very obvious that it's an I. So if you got all four of those correct and you wrote it correctly, great job. All right, let's look at the next one. Um, okay, two lines. We need to label two lines. So I see that there's a line here. I'm going to call that H-I. And make sure you put that high. <laughs> you put that little line symbol on top of it. That would be one. If you wrote I-H, that's okay. Um, but H-I, high, is, is totally better. No, it's not. It doesn't matter. I'm just kidding. Okay, on to the next one. Um, the next line I see is FH, so comma, FH with a little line on top, or HF. Either one works. Perfect. Um, if you got that right, great job. Uh, moving on to the last one is a plane. So whenever you're trying to label a plane, you write the word plane, and then you pick three points uh, that are not on the same line. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick uh, H, I, F. That would be one example. Or if you said uh, plain H, I, G, that would be another one. Or, oh, we should do this one. This one's actually a word. Plain F, I, G, fig. Plain fig. Yeah. Well, you just had to do one, but uh, those are just three different ways you could write the same thing. And maybe you have uh, used three different ones that I didn't use, uh, and that's okay, too. All right, cool. Let's move on to the next thing. The next thing we're going to talk about is a ray. Now, um, a ray is actually a part of a line. Not a whole line, it's a part of a line, okay? 
it has one endpoint. So you see here, it's an endpoint here. That means the line does not go forever. It just, it stops there, or this is where it starts. So it has one endpoint and then extends forever in one direction, which would be this way, like that. So there is our ray, okay? And we would label this ray as a G, H, and then you make a little ray symbol on top. But the ray symbol, uh, the endpoint has to match up with whatever the endpoint is on the picture. So uh, right here, the endpoint is on G, so it would be like that. That would be a cute little ray symbol right there. If we did H, G like that, the ray symbol would have to go the other way because the endpoint is corresponds with G. Okay, so those are two different ways that you can write this ray. Okay, um, a line segment is a part of a line. All right, it's a part of a line or a ray that extends from one endpoint to another. So it doesn't extend forever in either direction. It just goes, here's the endpoint, and it just goes there and stops, or it starts here and goes here. So it just is within these two endpoints, okay? So that is just a segment of either a line or a ray called a line segment. And we can write this symbol as LM, and then we just put a little line segment on top, or ML, and we put another little line segment on top. And that's how you write the symbol for a line segment. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and look at some examples. Example number two, identifying line segments and rays. Okay, let me get this ready for you. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, so we have a figure and uh, we're just gonna identify the figures in the diagram. So with this diagram, it's asking us to find three rays. All right, cool. So one ray I see is an obvious one, M-O, and M is the end point, and then it goes on and on forever in this O direction. So we would write the symbol like this, M-O, with the end point lining up with uh, M, because M is the end point. So that would be one example. Uh, we could write it the other way, which would be O. M, but the, uh, the end point would still have to line up with the M, which tells us just by looking at the symbol that M is the, mid, the end point, okay? So that is, that's basically one example, two different ways to write the same thing. So that counts as one. Uh, let's go ahead and do a, a, write the symbol for another ray. Another ray would be, hey, let's say we call M the end point again, except it goes from N to N, this direction. So we're kind of, we're taking that part off of the diagram and we're just saying, hey, M is the end point and it goes from M to N forever and ever. So we would write that as M N and we would put the little ray symbol so that the end point on M corresponds with the picture. Um, and then we could also write this as NM, but the endpoint would have to still line up with M. So that's, either way, that's like one thing. So we have one ray, another ray, and then the last ray is if we were to call N the endpoint. And then, so this is the endpoint, and then the ray goes forever and ever, ever off in this direction. So we would call this one NM, but now we're putting the, uh, the end point on top of N. So we could write it that way, or we could write it as MN with the end point on top of N. So there we have it, one, two, three, okay? Um, okay, now we're, we need to describe two line segments, okay? So one example of a line segment would just be MN, and those would be both of the uh, line segments. Our line would go back and forth there. So it, it, we're, we, it, when I write this and I write 
M in and I put the little line segment, it is only referring to this part of the figure when I write that symbol. I know that there's a lot of other things, but when I write this, it's only referring to that yellow portion, okay? Um, I could also write the same thing as um, N, M with a line segment on top. These two things mean the same thing, okay? So that's one, that's an example of one thing. Uh, the other line segment would be M, O. That is a line segment there. So we would just write that as M-O with a line segment on top, or we could write it as O-M with a line segment on top. Okay, so those are two different examples. I know they wrote them in multiple ways, but um, I just wanted you to get comfortable with that. So now it is your time to check it out. So check it out, example two. Um, I want you to go ahead and identify the figures in the diagram. Now we're using this diagram. You're going to go ahead and write down three rays and three line segments. So where's our friend? Oh, here's the pause dragon. Reminding you it's time to pause, work out those two problems, and then press play, and we'll see how you did. All right, see you in a bit. We are back, we are back, we are back. Okay, ready to attack this problem. Okay, three rays. All right, we can do it. Uh, one ray would be, let's say one ray would be, um, the end point would be B, and we would go towards D off forever and ever. Since it has this arrow right here, that means that we can go forever and ever off in this direction. So that would be one example of a ray, B, D, and we have to make sure the end point is on B, okay? Um, or I could write it as DB with the endpoint still on B like that. Okay, so that's one example. Let's look, 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 look. Another example, what do you guys have? Would be two. Let's say B is the endpoint, and we go forever and ever and ever off in the A direction because that is an arrow which goes forever. So if your second one is BA with the endpoint on B, you would be great. You would be perfect. You would be correct. Um, or we can write it a different way by just saying AB with the endpoint on B going off in the A direction. Okay, that would be two. We have two. Can we get three, ladies and gentlemen? Here we go. For three, the other ray would be if B was the endpoint, and now we go off in the direction of C, like that. So it would be B, C, the endpoint would be on B going in the C direction, which shows what's happening in the figure. Or if another way to write it would be to go C, B, and uh, our endpoint would still be on B going off in the C direction. So there you go. One, two, three. If you got all those right, good job. Okay, on to the B. Uh, three line segments. Okay, okay, okay. Now there's a lot of line segments on here. We're... Let's just go for it. We're gonna go line segment crazy. I just can feel it. It's gonna happen. So one line segment you could say would be CD. That would be one. CD with a line segment or DC with a line segment. A second line segment you could do would be, what would it be, what would it be, what would it be? It would be BD. That would be another line segment. So you could go BD or you could go DB. Okay, that would be another one. Uh, so what do we have so far? We have CD. We wrote down that line segment. We wrote down BD. Um, another line segment we could write down would be, um, it would be, what would it be? What would it be? It would be AB. AB would be another line segment. So that's a third one. We could write AB or BA. That means the same thing. There's another one. Another line segment would be actually BC right there. So we can write that would be a fourth one. BC or CB. And there's actually a fifth one. Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? The fifth one, the grand finale of all line segments. I know we only have to do three, but I'm just getting excited, and so we're going to do another one. The fifth one would be AC, 
right there, AC. That would be the fifth line segment. So we can write that as AC or CA. And I think we have come to the end of all the line segments. All right, so if you got those right, uh, great job. Okay, dokie. Let's see, we're gonna move on to the next thing. Oh, we're talking about the idea of congruence. I need to zoom out and then zoom in and then zoom out and then zoom in and then zoom out. I'm sorry, we're just, I'm sorry, I was getting carried away. Okay. Uh, figures are congruent if they have the same shape. Figures are called congruent if they have the same shape and size. Line segments are congruent if they have the same length. You can use tick marks to indicate congruent line segments. In, in the triangle below, line segments AB and BC are congruent. Do you see these lovely little tick marks right here? See that little hash mark? If you see those in a figure like this, that means that these two line segments, BC and AC, are congruent. And let me show you how you write this. This is so fun. Okay, I'm gonna write line segment AB. And so I gotta put my little cute line segment on top of it. And then line segment BC, like this. And then you use this lovely, they're equal, right? but you use this little kind of wavy thing like that and that shows that they are congruent. That's how you show that AB, line segment AB, is congruent to line segment BC. Just like that, congruence. It's a beautiful thing. All right, and now it is time to go on to the next example. I think you understand congruence, okay. Um, we have example three, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. Example three is identifying congruent line segments. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we are going to identify line segments that are congruent in the figure. Well, to me, it looks like there's a lot of line segments are, that are congruent, so let's go for it. Okay, so the first thing I see is a line segment that has one tick mark. Do you see it? Do you see it? Do you see it? AB has one tick mark, and CD also has one tick mark. So we can say that those two line segments are congruent to each other, all right? So this is how we're gonna do it. AB, line segment AB is congruent to line segment CD. Boom, that is one. Can we do another? Can we do another? I see another one. Okay, I see something that actually has two tick marks. If you see here, one, two, and then right here, that's BD, and then here are one, two. So when they have two mar tick marks, that means that these two line segments are congruent to each other, but they are not congruent to the one that only has one tick mark. So AC is not congruent to AB because this has one tick mark and this has two tick marks. For something to be congruent to something else, they have to have exactly the same amount of tick marks. Okay, so AC is congruent to BD. Boom, let's go ahead and write it down. So that would be the second one. AC, line segment AC, is congruent to line segment BD. Boom. Okay, do you see anything else? 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 Do you see the three tick marks? There are three, count them, count them. One, ooh, that wasn't very good. One, two, three. So that means that BF is congruent to over here, DF, which has one, two, three, which is also congruent to AE, which has one, two, three, which is also congruent to CE, which has one, two, three. It's like a congruence party, okay? So this is gonna get crazy. This is gonna get wild. We're going to do it. We're gonna write all of these congruence, okay? So what this means is that line segment AC is congruent to line segment 
CE, which is congruent to line segment BF, which is congruent to line segment DF, the grand finale of congruence. There you go. It's a party, a congruence party, and you are invited, okay? It's a happy time. All right, so um, you can list all four of them. You can just pick any two that are congruent. It doesn't matter. We just know that because everything, uh, all of these have three tick marks that they are all congruent to each other. All right, now it is your tar turn, tarn. It's your turn um, to, uh, oh, I'm sorry here. This says reading math. It's important to read math. Let's read it together. The symbol, this, which is a an equal sign with a little wavy thing on top. That means is congruent to. Okay, now it's your turn to check it out, ladies and gentlemen. Example number three. We are going to identify the line segments that are congruent in the figure. And now it's your turn to show off and show me everything you know about congruence. And so go ahead and pause. When you get done, press play, and we will talk about the problem. All right, see you in a bit. See you in a bit. All right, we are back, and let's get going. It is a congruence party, and yes, you are invited. Am I invited? Yes, you're invited, too. I really want to go. Congruence parties are like the best thing in the world. I know, you're invited. Okay, you can come, too. Okay, let's get going. Now everybody feels included. Included. Uh, the first thing I see is tick marks. One tick mark would be A, C, and A, B. Okay, those are congruent to each other. So that's the first one I'm going to write down. So if you have line segment A, C is congruent to line segment A, B, great job. Okay, on to the next one, on to the next, on to the next, on to the next. Uh, the next one I see are two tick marks. That would be B, C is congruent to D, E. So if you have that one written down, wonderful, 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 B, line segment BC is congruent to line segment DE, great job. And there is one last one. If you have three tick marks and you see that uh, one, two, three, BD is congruent to CE right there, um, that's the third one. So B, D is congruent to C, E. If you got all three of those right, oh, I got to put my little line segment mark on top of there. I got too excited. If you got all of three of those right, yo, kereke, mashta, you did a great job, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.